Welcome to Lyric Hi-Fi. Uh, we are shooting this as part of the worldwide launch of the new Kef Blade Meta and Reference Meta. Um, I've just back from a tour of a launch and the factory and we've been showing the new products and they're, they're launching very soon. And the Meta technology is something I've talked about before. You can go back and see a video explaining that about the LS50 Meta, but I'm going to go over this again for you. Um, whenever you look at a loudspeaker inside, there's usually lots of wadding and dampening, and that's to stop reflections inside the cabinet and to stop the air, say, from the base unit pushing back and affecting what's happening as the treble unit starts to move forward. And these things have been tried by people for lots of uh, years and different approaches to that. One of the ones that if you've looked at the B&W Nautilus, they actually have a tube at the back of the treble unit, which is maybe uh, almost a meter long to get that sound out and not come back again. But uh, Kef's engineers, uh, stroke scientists, worked on a thing called meta material. Meta material is something that um, doesn't exist in nature. It's a, a manufactured and designed material. And in this case, you have a little disc like this that goes on the back of the uh, treble unit and mid-range unit. And it has in it uh, around about four kilometers of tubes. And these tubes are tiny. Now there are several of them at different diameters to absorb different frequencies. And that means that uh, down to around about 620 hertz, there are no reflections. So the entire mid-range and high frequencies are enormously cleaned up. Fantastic technology. So why didn't Kef just stick this in immediately when they did it on the LS50s? Well, the LS50s was a test bed for this, and then you would apply it to the highest level of performance. The highest level of performance in Kef is a speaker called Reference and a speaker called Blade. This is a Blade 2, which is a slightly smaller blade. Blade 1 is the same thing, but a third bigger. So for a lot of rooms, actually, the Blade 2 makes more sense. Um, but if Kef are going to stick this on, they're not that kind of people, they're not that kind of engineers. There's a lot more they can do. This drive unit, the edges, the flares, the angles, the, the motor system for the, uh, to push it forward, all of these things have been re-examined and there are 14 individual changes and improvements made to this. The work that was being done on the UniQ drive unit with all these changes, there were five engineers working on this for several years to get this done and to get it into production. And we went and had a look at the R&D lab after the, the next day after the launch and did a factory tour. Some shots will be cut in from that. And these people are smart, smart guys. We've got a team with people from uh, Mexico, uh, Hong Kong, France, and Mumbai. And it's an international band of guys who've all got the highest qualifications in acoustics. And they have a design department and a research department, which is second to none. And because uh, KEF make all their own drive units specific for them, they carry this the whole way through. Many manufacturers say they've got their own drive units, but actually they go to a company that makes drive units and they go, oh, I'll have that basket and I'll have that magnet and I'll have that cone and I'll have this suspension. And they pick from a menu. Kef don't do that. Everything is individually done for them. There are no, there are no shared parts that they do with anyone else. Also, with blades, we should also mention reference because reference is a fantastic range of speakers. You've got uh, a bookshelf one, you've got a tall thin floor stander and an even bigger floor stander, this kind of size here. And they uh, have used this name reference for many, many years, maybe 30 years. This is a reference 207 from about 10 years ago. But the name reference is an interesting thing because everybody uses this in bandies at about. But the founder of KEF was an engineer called Raymond Cook. And whenever he started doing reference, what they did was when they got the speaker finished, they built a reference speaker. In fact, they built two reference speakers. And that sets the standard 
for how this speaker works. And so they measure the reference speaker. One goes in the dem room at KEF and the other one goes in the production line. Every individual speaker is measured and compared to the reference. And you can actually see the graph of how close these things are. And it has to be within a fraction of a dB to be able to be called a pass. So the reference means that the quality control is the highest, highest consistency. Uh, so reference isn't just a term that means nothing. And on the factory tour, uh, you can see the engineers building the speakers. You can see them testing the speakers. You can see them signing the speakers. And you know that that is built, hand-built for you to the highest quality. So you see all this science at the factory. You see how precise everything is and how scientific it is. And it brings to mind that lots of manufacturers, speaker manufacturers, are talking about how they're putting things together to give you a particular tone or to give you um, a particular sound. And it's an interesting one because when you're making an instrument and you're making a Steinway or you're making a, a guitar or whatever it happens to be, that guy is designing and the craftsmanship is there to add his tone, his sound, his his uh, his flavour to the sound and what he wants it to sound like, the same way as people do with valve amplifiers and things like that. And they are creating the sound they want. And some speaker manufacturers and hi-fi manufacturers talk about creating their sound. And this is, frankly, uh, a load of rubbish because the precision and the science and the research is there to reproduce what is on the master tape, what is on the record, and to get that as faithfully as possible. Not to add, not to subtract, but to actually completely accurately reproduce. And that science and that research is what KEF are doing here. Whenever you play a KEF system, if that piano, that guitar has that tone and has that character, you will hear that character more accurately by it not adding anything, by it not taking anything away. And that is the purpose of really great hi-fi, is to reproduce exactly what has gone in, not to add. So go and have a listen to these speakers, even if you can't afford them. Oh, have I not mentioned the price? Oh, okay. Blade twos are going to be twenty-two and a half thousand pounds, or special finishes at twenty-five thousand pounds. Blade ones are going to be thirty thousand pounds. Reference speakers are going to start from around about uh, eight and a half thousand pounds up to about uh, fifteen to seventeen thousand pounds. Whenever these were new, this was probably 10 years ago, 12 years ago. These were 12,000 pounds and they were top of the range. They still sound pretty damn good today, but the new ones have moved on. So if you've got a pair of those, come and see me. I'll get you a pair of these. And as the science moves on, hi-fi and music moves on and becomes more interesting and it brings your entire collection to life. So I'm delighted that I'm going to have the new ones here soon and have a play about with them. I'll pop back and tell you about that. But for now, thanks for watching. Uh, press the button, subscribe, like, do all that kind of thing. And we'll be talking to you soon. Thanks for watching.